Hi everyone, it's Ed, your SAS Gym personal trainer here again with a special guest that I'm going to be training today and demonstrating to you how you can get a productive workout in under 20 minutes. So, without further ado, let me introduce John Brady, MD, CEO, Dog's Body at SAS. Founded the company 25 years ago and uh, foolishly, or maybe for the right way reasons, I asked Ed about how I could uh, lose a bit of Christmas weight and start the year correctly in a time efficient way. And uh, Ed said, I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to show you. So that's why I'm here. Okay, so time to get a bit of post Christmas training going. So luckily enough here in the SS gym, I do have a fair few bits of kit at my disposal, but I thought we'd keep it simple and show you, you don't need a lot of kit. We have a bench here, but you can use any furniture at home, a Swiss ball, which I think works well to replicate a bench, and it's anything from 10 to 15 pounds in most retail stores. So we're gonna be just using dumbbells today. So John, if you grab the tens and lie back on the bench, we're going to start with a bench press. We're going to keep the rest periods brief. So I've got 10 reps, John. As you can see, John's using a good range of motion. Dumbbells over the chest. And we're going to create a cardiovascular element by, as I said, decreasing the amount of rest John's getting. So, when John's finished his 10 reps, which is just coming up, if you stow those away, John, and then grab the sixes, we're going to go straight into another exercise, different muscle group, bicep curl. So John's just worked his chest, he's now working his biceps, but most importantly, he's working his heart rate. He's working that cardiovascular side of things by reducing his rest. When John's done his 10 reps of curls, rest for a brief amount of time, I would recommend 20 to 30 seconds, and then we'll go again. You'll see a lot of varieties online of rep ranges and sets. I think if you're doing exercises back to back, two to three rounds is plenty, regardless of your fitness level. Also, during that 20 minute time slot, if you restrict it to two rounds, you're going to get more variety and more money for group work. So back onto the bicep curls for John. And as you can see, nice controlled reps there. And John's extending fully, rather than doing a half repetition, you're working the bicep top to bottom. Our dumbbells range from one up to 10. I've chosen just um, two today, just to show you again, you don't need loads and loads of different pairs of dumbbells. So, next up, we've done an upper body exercise. We're now going to go lower body, John, your favourite. We're going to go for some static lunges. So, it's going to be this position, get a balance, ball of your foot, keeping your body upright, 10 reps, one leg into another. Excellent. Sometimes balance is the issue on these. Hence why you can see John's back leg is on the ball of his foot. Sometimes it's easy to flatten the foot. Feels more stable, but it throws you out of alignment. And this, as I'm sure John will testify, works your glutes, <laughs> your quads. And again, because we're keeping the rest times low, keeps that heart rate up, works your cardio. Although one exercise, that's 20 reps, so it's 10 on each leg, back to back. It's gonna get you, gonna get that heart rate up. It does. <laughs> and I think, um, having done this job for quite a while now, one thing I've perhaps learned is splitting up cardio and resistance training. They don't have to be separate. And I think, as you can see now, although you're quite tough on yourself, you've got a good fitness level, but by restricting the rest period, you're reducing the time 
that you're training for, which for a lot of you is good news, you've got busy lives at home and at work, but you're also, as you can see, a little bit out of breath. Getting your heart going. Getting your heart going. Right, round two. So same again, 10 on each leg. Whilst John's completing those, I'll just show you some alterations. You can go for an alternating lunge, so that would be 20 reps in total. This one, by keeping it static though, you do isolate the legs more effectively and also, if you do have troublesome knees or any joint pain, you're not lunging forward and putting pressure as you come in. Now's a good time to say if this workout interests you, if you felt like you wanted to try it out but maybe you haven't got a bench or you only had one set of dumbbells, that's one of the many things I'm here for. Please send me an email on Ask Ed and I can always adapt the workout for you. Excellent. So, I'm going to show you two ways to do this next exercise. Bear in mind we're fortunate to have an adjustable bench. This works your back, and by laying yourself on the bench like so, it protects your lower back, keeps your form strict. You can have your feet down by one side, you can always put one leg up. And from this position, we're coming up, squeezing shoulder blades together, this one works your upper back. And from there, let's go more quickly, turn over and go into a dumbbell fly to stretch the chest down. And lucky Johnny, you're going to have the sixes, I'll take the fours. <laughs> so ten reps of each. You can, whilst John completes these, do these stood up. You could even sit on the edge of the bench or a chair, like so. But as you can see, the bonus of having this inclined bench keeps John's back at 45 degrees. He's not stressing his lower back, and also importantly, he's targeting where he wants to hit the top of the back. And we're doing this on an incline, but you can perform this on a flat surface as well. John's arms are bent and locked, so he's taking the pressure off his joints. He's applying the stretch and the tension on his outer chest. And again, sticking with that theme of two exercises or 20 reps in total. So already, that is our third combo. Each round is, four, is 20 reps, so 40, 80, 120 reps already by the time we finish this. That was testing my uh, limited math skills. How did you find that one? Yeah, that's the bit where that is more, and then that seems more relieving. Yes. But both, you feel that the heart rate Yeah, you're literally working it. opposites. And I always think that one is quite good when you're teaching perhaps a, a young gentleman who's a little bit exuberant <laughs> with more weight. You don't need a lot of weight for that one. No. It's quite tough. <laughs> right, so in again. It was then I was thinking of, I should have gone with the fours. That was my fault, I took that option away. <laughs> That's it, good work. And you can actually see John bringing his shoulders away back and squeezing. That's engaging the upper back muscles to a greater extent. Also good for your posture, this. If you think of you guys, perhaps you're uh, hunched over a desk, unfortunately, for many hours of the day. Keeping your shoulders back. Resistance training isn't just about getting muscular and strong. It is about making your quality of life more comfortable, protecting those joints, building muscle around them, keeping you conditioned. Excellent. Next combination for the shoulders. Again, adapting this for those of you that haven't um, got opportunities to use a bench at home. You can do both of these exercises sat with no back support. Makes it a little bit tougher because obviously in this position you've got that lower back covered. The two exercises John's going to do is a lateral raise. 
for the side head or the medial head of your shoulders. 10 repetitions into a pressing motion, also for 10. Like so. The lateral raise is a tougher movement, so you've got a little bit lighter on that. So John's going to use the sixes for that. And then I'm going to um, peer pressure him into the tens for the press. <laughs> Excellent. You can see John's got a slight bend in his elbow. That takes the pressure off the joint. Also, it helps isolate that side head of the shoulder, that medial head. as you can see you naturally arc down into a wider position at the bottom of the movement and then squeeze above the head which helps contract the shoulders just there. That's good work. Excellent. So that's one round down. John's got one more round of that. And then looking ahead we've got a finisher coming up where we're going to combine some core work and a little bit of light cardio, but that's going to be body weight based. I would say, whilst John's finishing this last combination set, a 15 to 20 minute workout like this, little rest, maximising your time, you can complement that, you can perform that say twice a week, it's a full body workout, you could complement that with a walk with friends as the weather improves, maybe a bike ride. Fit it in around what suits you at work. I'm fully aware as an ex-teacher that a lot of people have the luxury of finishing work at five and they know they can go home, sort out their family and then go to the gym or go for a run or a bike ride. It's different at school. You might have a parents' evening and after school club marking. The list is endless. So I would also suggest not putting set days um, on yourself. Don't put that pressure. Look at the week as a seven day period and that you're going to exercise or be active for three of those seven days. That's a good start. Maybe make one or two of them short resistance workouts, one of them cardiovascular. Whatever you prefer, but aim for three and seven. Excellent. Right. So to finish, I'm just going to move the bench out of the way so you can see. Luckily. We have this gym mat. This is certainly something that's very easy to come by, inexpensive. You can pick it up from a retailer for anything from five pounds up to, if you really want to push out the boat, maybe 20. But useful for, as you can see, we've got an uneven floor here. Just flatten things out, makes it more comfortable for your back. So John doesn't know it yet, but he is going to be performing 20 repetitions of crunches for his upper abs keeping his lower back grounded. You don't have to sit all the way up and put pressure on your spine. It's just about contracting your abs. 20 reps of that. 20 reps for his lower abs with knee extensions. And then, if that wasn't enough, to get that heart rate up, he's got 20 jumping jacks to finish. Two rounds of this, and that'll be the workout done. Full body. Obviously, you've got cardio element throughout by keeping the rest period low, but throwing in the jumping jacks at the end. When your body's fatigued already, we'll finish the job off. Excellent. As you can see, John's not coming too high up, but he's contracting those abs. And you can do a straight leg raise, or, John, if you bring your knees in and then kick out, that's an adjusted version. It's a little bit kinder on the lower back. But as you can see, in a good way, John's starting to feel the burn a little bit. <laughs> but genuinely, I think the, um, the era of exercise has to be for an hour. I think that was more befitting to your typical gym session. These days, fitting it in around your working life, around your home life, is important. Right, John, that's what we get for your jumping jacks, don't you? Jumping jacks? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> did, I, did I forget? Oh, was it? So, there we go. And as you can see, you'll probably recognise a lot of these exercises we've done. I haven't reinvented the wheel. They're tried and tested for a reason. Excellent. 
And you can change things up. We've chosen these particular exercises today for ease of use, just using a minimal amount of equipment, but sky's the limit. There's a lot of combination you can use. And again, like I said earlier, ask me. That's what I'm here for. So last round for John. And then he's off to ride my P45. <laughs> Excellent. All jokes aside, you can tell he's put in the work. Getting tough now, which it should do. You work hard for pretty much 20 minutes non-stop. Regardless of your fitness level, you're going to find it challenging. But it's down to you. It's what you can fit in in that 20 minutes. Everyone has a starting point. There's always someone fitter than you are. So, if you're thinking, there's no way I can get this amount of stuff done, don't put the pressure on yourself. If you want any guidance, contact me. That's it, good work, John. Excellent. So, a great investment of time, like Ed. Out of breath, feel like I've achieved something in a relatively short space of yeah. time. And I'll say it to anyone who's watching this, just ask Ed. Thanks. No, pleasure. Thanks guys, thanks for watching. Contact me if you need anything.